not too wild of a conversation today, but one that should be uh, proportionately helpful. I'm a firm believer that the numbers inside of your private practice tell a story slash they kind of reveal the honest truth of what's going on. And I know this from experience. I am not a numbers person. I do not like calculating the numbers inside of my business. It's something that I've had to grow in and continue to grow in. But with clarity, with precision, and honestly, just knowing which numbers are important. You can spend all day looking at any and every number that's being calculated in your in your practice or in your business. But I think that there are a couple really important ones to look at if you're wanting to grow and the stories that they tell about your business right now, depending on what the answer is about them. So that's what we're going to talk about today. I think this is going to be really relevant for those that are struggling with how to or when to invest in marketing. And I think this will be really important for those that are looking to grow or scale their group practice uh, significantly in the next 12 months, because these numbers can really lead the charge on when it's appropriate to invest money, spend more, hire, and scale your business. So without any further ado, we're going to talk about lifetime value of your clients as the starting piece, how to calculate it, what to do with it, and what business decisions it affects. And we'll talk about two other important ones. So Atilio, what's lifetime value inside of a therapy practice? Yeah. So <clears throat> for a solo, it's really, really easy to calculate this number. All you have to do is get your session rate, multiply it by the average number of sessions that your client sticks around for, um, and you get a lifetime value number. Um, and so usually that number for therapists, we typically see this between like a thousand to three thousand uh, dollars for for any individual therapist, um, just doing like their normal talk therapy sessions. And so if you wanted to do this for maybe a group, you can take a look at each of your individual therapist rates and each of your individual therapists churn numbers. Churn is what happens. Uh, like how many sessions it takes before someone drops off, right? Or doesn't reschedule. And so uh, this number is probably the most important number <laughs> that there is for a practice. It implies a lot. And it's actually how much one client is, is really worth to you and your practice. So from this number, you can decide a lot of things for your practice. You can, like on Josh's newsletter this morning, he said, that you can calculate maybe how much you should be spending for a client from this number. Obviously, it doesn't make sense to spend time and energy to acquire clients at a really high rate compared to you know the proportion of your lifetime value. Um, and then what's like maybe realistic for you to actually spend to be getting clients to run a profitable business. It yeah. all comes from the function of LTV. Um, lifetime value is also one of those things that helps you organize around maybe some of the core pillars for like scaling your practice. So like if you want speed, stability, high revenues, high profits, great client results, personal freedom and flexibility, um, LTV is one of those numbers that you need to look at. It's one of the, the big levers in your practice that you need to look at, um, when it comes to you getting the goal that you want to get, um, from your business. So. I think with lifetime value, it's just important to look if you have a really low lifetime value, meaning uh, we can't control it and or we're supposed to be controlling it. And I think it tells two stories. Number one is if we see a really low average lifetime value, a good way to ask yourself is for the like primary issues that people are coming into your practice for how long if they complete a good care plan and i know it's different for everyone how how long uh should someone actually be sticking out therapy with you many of you have to or do provide like the faith estimates so maybe it's also like how how closely do those line up the estimate you're providing clients so you're saying a client should have Hey, most people with complex trauma, if they're getting good therapy, actually sticking to it and resolving it should be in the therapy room weekly for six months or this person who needs this type of somatic therapy or this type of play therapy, how long or how many sessions typically, maybe you do, do some rough calculations on that and figure out if you're coming anywhere close to that for that client set or that client type. And what that can tell you is the, you know, the gap between 
a like business quality care systems, integration, reactivation language from your therapist that should be retaining the client and the natural drop off that happens because we're providing good therapy services. Yeah, I think one of the interesting elements on lifetime value, and I think so many private practices feel pigeonholed into how to change this because you can't change maybe some of those churn numbers uh, because it's largely like client centric, right? We're, we're taking an ethical approach to therapy. We're not just keeping people um, forever. Maybe some of us are keeping them for a long time. Um, and so I think the big lever for lifetime value in private practice is just to increase the total number of clients. So like, hey, each of our clients are worth $3,000. So if I want to grow, then I just need to get more clients in the door. And that's one way to kind of look at it. The other elements in here are how do we how do we improve the likelihood that someone comes back or thinks of us, you know, maybe in the future. And so where we thought our lifetime value was 3000, it actually turns out to be like closer to 6000 because of our reactivations or uh, other little interesting things that we provide or stay top of mind with. Yeah. Next, we're going to talk about cost to acquire clients. And I think this is really important for us to consider, especially once we have that lifetime value is, is there's the cost to fulfill which is just whatever you typically have to pay your, your therapist plus add in all your other extra operational costs. Uh, but what does it cost us to acquire one client? Uh, Atilio, before we even talk about how to calculate this, to tell us a little bit why calculating this is important, what business decisions this can affect. Yeah. So cost to acquire a client is probably the, the most important factor um, when it comes to like your profitability um, as, as a practice, you know, there's a lot of factors that go into acquiring a client, including your marketing or advertising spends, but then also your administrative costs. And I think if you set a good benchmark for yourself, when it comes to acquiring a client, what ends up happening is you develop a good rhythm and good practices for your business. And so if these costs start going out of hand, it is going to be a detrimental process to your profits, and it's going to make it really, really hard to run your business. Um, but I think cost to acquire a client is also kind of permission in a lot of ways uh, to spend time and energy to acquire a client. Um, I think sometimes, certainly as maybe like a new or a young business owner, we don't want to find permissions or we, we're trying to just short ourselves on how much we can actually spend on marketing. And what it does is, is actually it slows down your progress so much that you never get a great business. And so I think cost, cost to acquire a client isn't just about where operationally you need to improve or fix, but it's also the permission to try to hit a number, quite frankly. Um, there's a, there's a great quote from a, a marketing kind of guru out there. His name's Dan Kennedy. And his quote is the, the, the business that can spend the most to acquire a client profitably, uh, will acquire the client. And so if you solve that problem, if you solve the problem of cost to acquire a client and how to spend higher, um, you're going to get the attention you need. Um, and people will end up choosing you. Uh, I think it's kind of sad sometimes, but it's also very real that it's not always the business that has the best product, like the best therapist that wins at the end of the day, um, but it's the person who screams the loudest. <laughs> so it's the person who has the most attention on them. And so in a lot of ways, if you're a growth-minded practice owner and you want to grow larger, um, yes, having great therapists, having you know excellent client care is really, really important, but also screaming really, really loud is just as important or more important. Uh, I'm going to throw this up. So when we're when we're um, calculating this, it's going to be your total marketing spend uh, on any sources plus staff time slash, you know, for some commissions spent or calculated into it, right? So if you have one intake coordinator and they don't even do any back end billing or anything else, they're all front office, just to try and get new clients in the door and you pay them a thousand a week, right? You're, that's going to be $4,000 a month. 
So just for an example, if you'll, you'll probably want to take either a, somewhere between a month, three months, like a quarter or six months, a half a year, look back at what is every single amount that you spent on marketing in the last six months, your psychology today is paid ads, organic, right? And you maybe even will want to spend a little bit of time calculating your staff time. Did they do outreaches? Did you do outreaches? Like what's, what's your time worth? Like you get really once with this, but essentially great. By rough calculation or by direct calculation, which would be even better, I spent $15,000 in the last six months on marketing and staff time. And now we signed up 234 new clients, which results in cost me 64 bucks to find a new client. Okay. That's probably pretty good if someone's coming in and they're spending $100 on their very first session with you. You know, you're probably going to make some profit off of your first client. And now we can start to try and move this number up or down based off of what makes sense or go move our other numbers up or down like our lifetime value or our cost of our session or some of those things. Because some people are like, wow, it cost me $120 to acquire a new client, but I only get $1, I mean $100 per session and then I pay my therapist out of it. You're losing money for on the first session, at least for every client that you acquire. And that's why starting to calculate these numbers makes sense. The other thing is also give the confidence to say, wow, it's only costing me on average 34 bucks or 64 bucks to acquire a new client. That means I probably should spend more money on marketing and I'll get more clients back. I want to give a really realistic um, example real quick. I think oftentimes we'll see like a cost to acquire a client being close to like $300, right? It's like $300 on the practice. It takes them one to two sessions, two to three sessions to actually start getting that, those profitable dollars um, after, you know, paying your therapist fees and after doing all the cost to, uh, you know, acquire. And so I, I want to encourage some of you who maybe feel like there's kind of a catch 22 situation here. It's a little bit normal, and I think that's part of like the ethical constraints that we have as practice owners um, and just like the cost to kind of just advertise these days just costs more. You know, everything kind of costs a little bit more. Um, and so as, as we have more dollars and more energy spent on getting people involved in the mental health space, um, I think you'll actually maybe see some of these costs decrease. And so... I want to just encourage all of you, if you're like, wow, $300 to acquire a client, it's like, yeah, maybe that's what it takes. Like you have to have a few conversations. Not everyone's going to be the right fit for you. You're not going to be able to get everyone on the phone. Um, and so just kind of maybe take that into consideration. You know, it costs a little bit of money, time, energy uh, to make sort of that those first few steps. But then once it starts happening, uh, things start catching up. You start ending up with clients that want to stay longer. So your churn numbers start naturally decreasing as you have higher higher volume of just clients uh, that are sticking. Uh, and so it's a long-term game. It's a long-term game. It's a marathon. You don't have to go lightning quick, uh, but there is a really stable level out there that works for a lot of private practice owners once you have these numbers in your sights. Yeah. And then I think that kind of brings us to this final number, which is time to profit. So really plainly, uh, essentially time to profit is how long does it take me to see a dollar back into my bank account that doesn't go anywhere other than the bank account, right? And this, this is going to be really important for those of you that are wanting to grow for, for two big reasons. It will help you calculate um, what's left over on the machine. Essentially, if I go and sign up 100 people this next month, how much profit am I actually going to have off of that? Or how soon am I going to see that profit? And that great, that means I can successfully take percentage of all of that and put it back into growth mode or put and there's actually free cash flowing that I can put back into the business. Or it tells you if I actually go and sign up a bunch of clients, I'm going to be in the negative because but before my next round of expenses go back, it takes me three sessions, 10 sessions, whatever it is to see profit coming from this. Or sometimes it gives you an indication, oh, if, if someone doesn't make it to session two or they don't make it to session five, I genuinely lose money 
and I have to either make that up someplace else or solve that follow through problem because there's always going to be good fit issues, but most clients should probably be doing more than two or three sessions, right? And so if we're losing money, if they don't show up to the second or third session, that also becomes a really big problem for growth if we have a huge dropout right there because we're not seeing profit off of it. So essentially take your total marketing and your total fulfillment cost uh, and then look at your, your cash collection on, on that and then reduce it out uh, for what that looks like. So essentially if um, – I feel like I'm not being clear. Can you help me with this, Atelio? Yeah, I, I think the way that I look at time to profit, guys, is uh, you need to figure out your cost to acquire a client. Yeah. And uh, one, once you understand your cost to acquire a client, look at your LTV, right? And you can figure out how many maybe sessions are involved in there. So what Josh was saying, look at your costs. That includes your therapist costs. That includes everything else. Um, and just do a little bit of math there to figure out uh, maybe how many sessions it takes and then what that timeline actually looks like. So you're like, hey, if I need to actually run three three sessions before I make some profit off of the cost to acquire and therapist costs and all that good stuff, uh, it takes you three sessions. Well, how long does it take to get three sessions out of your clients? Well, on average, it takes four and a half weeks. Great. So it takes four and a half weeks to make profit. And so you kind of have a natural speed limit for your practice growth, right? Unless you just yeah. have money in the bank, which in that case, you know, maybe it unlocks a few <laughs> things. Take a look, <laughs> you know, that might and, be the interesting part. To and even to shrink that down, looking at that, okay, we have profit off of session one. We have a very low cost to acquire a client. We have a, we have a good split with the, the therapist or they're on salary or whatever it is. But what's the time that it typically takes from the point of when someone contacts you to them showing up to the first session? Some of you, you they don't get on the calendar till two or three weeks from now. Some some of you do same day bookings, and you know if that's the bulk of it. And can we average those numbers out of great? Even if I have profit on session one, on average, how long from point of contact to where I'm spending my marketing dollars? all the way to point of fulfillment on session one is it taking me for profit to return because maybe you can't spend maybe you're positive maybe every ten thousand dollars you spend on marketing you get fifteen thousand dollars back for however you don't see that fifteen thousand dollars for four weeks some of you who have um, collections and other things for uh, how insurance companies pay out this also affects you so really understanding your money cycles when the money shows up into your bank account, how it shows up, and what profit shows up out of that and how fast that returns to you is going to become really important if you want to say, yeah, I want to spend more money or really focus on growth over the next 12 months. Yeah, yeah. I think between these three levers here, you'll have a really, really good picture of just how fast you can make money, how well you can actually set your goals, and just what kinds of things maybe need to be modified in order for you to maybe approach that season of growth that you're interested in. I also want to encourage you, there's a million numbers out there, whether it's like what you can see in your bank account or what your ads show you or what Google shows you or what your website shows you. Like there's a million numbers out there, but I think what's really important is to look at these three big numbers um, as the business owner, if you really want to just like take a strategic decision-making approach to your practice and your practice growth, uh, these are the ones that you play with and some of the numbers that you use to calculate these numbers. Because yeah. uh, at the end of the day, if you're increasing your lifetime value and your cost to acquire is the same, you're making more profit. If your time to profit is ending up really, really short, uh, you know that you can move at this speed, right? There's an artificial speed for speed limit for you. And so if you're like, hey, can I make this goal happen, this big, hairy, audacious goal happen, um, you have to make these smaller events happen. And I think more often than not, you'll find that you can go a lot faster than you think you can um, if you just know what kind of places to move. Yeah, you know what things are going to keep the the train on the tracks. So 
I think with this, uh, as we started, your your numbers tell a story. They they tell a story of profit. They tell a story of loss. They tell a story of broken cycles or of successful cycles. And uh, use your numbers to fix the parts of your business that matter most for your growth. And I think even as we've seen, slowing down and calculating some of these for the first time will tell you a lot about your business and really reveal certain processes and certain problems that you didn't know exist or you didn't feel like were huge attention points and some of those things. So even something like in a positive way, we look at how much someone spends on Google ads and just that venue and like, great, how much does it cost to acquire one client from the Google ads that you're spending? And it feels like you're spending tons of money on Google ads. But when you add it all up, it's like, wow, I spend $80 on my Google ads and really consistently I get one new client out of it and my profit time, right? I get that on session two. Maybe I should spend more money on Google ads, even though it doesn't feel good because that will push growth. And now I have clarity and confidence to do that rather than ambiguity that do these ads work? Are they profitable? And that's you know one of the things we spend a lot of time with our clients before we say, hey, spend more money on ads. Go invest in different marketing. Go do a website revamp, X, Y, and Z. Let's have clarity on the number we're trying to improve other than just like top line revenue or growth for the sake of it. And what tool or what mechanism whether it's marketing or recruitment or, or whatever, is actually going to move the needle on that specific number. And can we afford it? Yeah. I don't know if I have too much else to add here. I hope this helps, guys. Leave us 